My name is Dr. Chimba, and uh, I am from Tennessee State University. And uh, my presentation will be about the student's experience. So in this uh, uh, session, we are going to give you just preview of uh, what you expect as an experience as a graduate student if you one day decide to go there. So one thing which I wanted to discuss with you is on the mentality of uh, being a graduate student. The first thing which you're going to see as a difference is the coursework which you're going to take. Uh, for undergraduate coursework, it is kind of a general coursework where you are learning everything. And I will use civil engineering as an example. In civil engineering, how many of you are civil engineering, by the way? Okay, so I'll use that, that as an example. In civil engineering, let's say we have a structural engineering, water resources engineering, transport engineering, geotechnical engineering, construction management, something like that. So in, in uh, undergraduate coursework, actually you are taking every course in all those areas, including the general education courses too, like chemistry, uh, history, uh, physics, and so forth. So you are forced to do that. There's no option. But when you go to graduate school, then your field of study is going to narrow a little bit. You are not going just to take the courses randomly. You're just going to take the courses which align with the, the specialization which you're going to have. So let's say uh, from civil engineering, you want maybe to specialize in transportation. Most of the courses which you're going to take uh, in the graduate school will be transportation-related courses. That will be the difference of what you can expect when you go for graduate school. Graduate school differ from undergraduate college that much of the force of the force is on the student. Right now, as a um, undergraduate student, we are trying to force you. Did you take this one? Did you take this course? But for the graduate school, most of the effort will be on you to know that what are you trying to do? What are you trying to achieve? What research you are working on? So the force will be on the student side. Uh, in undergraduate programs, there are a lot of courses that focus only to the student basic foundation and ideas. But for the graduate uh, student, you are going to focus on what actually falls on your research. So graduate school asks students to feed themselves. Though there's still coursework, we're still going to take some coursework. Actually, there are some school week which you can just graduate with the, with the research, and there are some school which you can just do the coursework. But most of the schools, you are going to combine the coursework as well as the, as the research point uh, of your study. So you have to do the coursework, but from the, your research, then all the weight, all the concentration, all the effort will be from the student point of view. Uh, undergraduate students, uh, undergraduate study allow individuals to explore a variety of areas. So we allow you, and I will be using civil engineering as an example, to when you graduate, you don't know where you're going. You can apply a job maybe to be storm, uh, uh, storm engineer, maybe hydrology, to be a traffic engineer. So we don't restrict you to concentrate on one area. You are going to take everything. But for the graduate, then you are trying to narrow your field of uh, expertise. Maybe I just want to be a traffic engineer. I just want to be maybe uh, a structural engineer. I just want to be a ge geotechnical engineer. So your, narrow, your study will narrow a little bit, and uh, the coursework is going to, to vary in that case. The workload in graduate studies entail that individual work close with the major professor advisors we are going to see, and uh, the advisor will advise you what type of courses you are supposed to take, and those courses should be aligned well with what research you are working on. An individual may also become part of the lab or the research group, and that research group might be working on something. And you are, you are supposed to work on that special uh, research which the other group are working on based on that particular lab. Undergraduate school is exam-based education, so you, are, you have uh, quizzes, you have homeworks, and those kind of stuff. For the graduate school, though, you are going to have those but it is for the purpose for those people who love research, scholarship, and teaching. In the graduate school, when you're taking, you have to do a research, you have maybe to publish some uh, paper, so do a uh, presentation on what you're working on. So let's say, I will use this example, let's say you're working on the uh, safety, maybe accident at the intersections. And then after you work there, then you want somebody to know that this is what you're working on. So how they can know it? You have to write a paper, go and present that paper somewhere, and then they know that this is the finding which you are going to come out with. The eventual goal of many doctoral students, and we are going to talk about the PhD, is to get a job as a college professor, maybe as a researcher in industry or something like that. So when you proceed above the master's level, you're going to the, uh, to the doctor or to get a PhD, then some perception that maybe you are thinking of being a, in academics like me, maybe teach or do some research in that case. So uh, 
For undergraduate coursework also, you acquire a general identity such as a civil engineer. When you graduate from undergrad, they don't call it a traffic engineer, or they don't call you the uh, uh, geotechnical engineer. They're just going to call you civil engineer, mechanical engineer, or electrical engineer. But when to go to the graduate school, now because you are going to narrow your area of the study, then you can, be the, you can study just on the structures. Then you are going to be called a structural engineer, or a traffic engineer, or the safety engineer, something like that. So you become the expert of certain area within the, 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 uh, the area which you are going to uh, to study on. You will become known as the person who wrote certain paper because when you do a research you publish it and somebody is going to like it. So let's say you are doing the uh, uh, study on the crashes at the intersection. Okay. And then you found that most of the crashes are caused by the left hands. And then the left hands you find that most of them involve senior people. So that is your finding. So you are going to publish. Somebody is going to see your work. And then somebody maybe will read your paper and say, you know what, this is this because Dr. Smith somewhere did a research and found that most of the uh, crashes at the intersection are caused by senior people. So master's level are mainly designed to give a solid education in a specialized field, but the PhD is more than master's. Let me tell you about the PhD. The PhD you are supposed to come out with something nobody has found in this world. It should be contribution. You are, you are going to contribute to the knowledge. So in the, uh, in the PhD program, let's say somebody, maybe uh, Chimba came with the formula, crash is equal to 2x plus 1. But you, are going, you can do a PhD to challenge me. Actually, it's not 2x. Chimba, you are wrong. It is 4x. So you contribute to the knowledge. Or maybe, what are the causes of accident at the intersection? Somebody said it was a left turn crashes. But you come with the idea, not left turn crashes. Actually, it's an angle crash, and that's the problem. So you come with something which nobody has done, or you're going to challenge somebody, maybe from their findings. So both master and PhD, I think you've already talked about this in, in, in other session, can be a full-time, can be a part-time, can be evening program, can be online, depending on what program you're going to take and uh, also depend on where you are. So the mass, on the master degree, most master candidates spend one to two years, even three years, depending where you are, which university you are. So that will depend on uh, uh, other factors. But what we know that master students take courses to fulfill degree requirement, just like undergrads. So you have to take some, some courses. You have to take classes. Uh, and those classes differ from one university to another. Some of them you can take 18 credit hours, 24 credit hours, 36 credit hours, depending on the university. But you have to take some uh, coursework. But what you're going to find that the coursework for the masters is heavier, because you are going much, much deeper to the theoretical uh, source of that. The formula which you're using now in uh, civil engineering, you might know where the source of this particular formula which you're going to use when, uh, we are, which you're using when you go to the graduate school. At the beginning of the master program, you choose or you are assigned advisor. And this advisor may be from this uh, program which you're having now. After the program, so you talk with Dr. Chimba, I want to come to Tennessee to do master's over there. So I have already known what you need. So when you come there, I will be just automatically your advisor. Or you can just join the university and then as a master student, they're just going to assign you the professor depending on uh, uh, what the area of the study you, uh, you want to focus on. This advisor will help you to develop academic focus and potential topic for your thesis. Just take like a capstone design. When you do the capstone design, you go to the professor and then the professor will ask you, do you have a topic you want to work on the, as a capstone? You say, I don't have. Then the professor will choose you a topic. Or if you have a topic, then you can work on that. Just the same as for the master level education. Then you decide on your research focus and complete your master thesis or final project. I say final project because uh, sometimes you take something they call Master of Engineering. Master of Engineering doesn't need a thesis, it just needs a project. But there's a Master of Science which needs a thesis. They're kind of the same thing, but the organization of the report is different depending on the, on the focus of that. And sometimes if you show uh, a good promise on the Masters, then you can proceed with the PhD the same school or you can go to another school with that. So uh, let's talk about the PhD a little bit. 
So most of the PhD programmers are uh, scholarship, have some scholarship and some funding. Very, very rare to find somebody paying for the PhD by, from their pocket. Because first of all, those who are taking PhD, they are not many, but also there's some funding for them. So most candidates spend three to six years. I saw some even students taking even eight years just to finish the PhD. So let me be honest with you. If I am the department chair and I am trying to hire a PhD no, no, a faculty, and then you come to me and say, I did my PhD in two years, I will be suspicious with you. Because how, how much time did you take the coursework, and how did you do the research, did you do the publication in two years? Then, uh, so that means that the more time you spend doing your research, give somebody maybe the confidence that this guy did the job he's supposed to do. But it can range between three to six years, and even more than that. And I will tell you why it might take more than six years. In the first two or three years, you can take your courses. That's courses just like master's or undergraduate. And then after that, you do something we call a proposal. So proposal is this. As a PhD student, you're supposed to give us a new knowledge. So you come up with what we call a problem statement. What is the problem? What's the problem you're seeing there? So let's say the problem that there's a lot of crashes at the intersection. That's a problem. Now, what is your hypothesis? What do you think is the cause of this problem? The hypothesis means that I think those intersections, we have a lot of senior people who reaction time is, is too high. Maybe they take five seconds, six seconds to turn, and that causes some those accidents. How do you want to do it? How do you want to prove your hypothesis? I want to go to the intersection, collect the data for six months, I want to analyze those data and then create the trend. So that is what we call a proposal. That proposal can be 10, 20 pages, 30 pages, and then you are going to present it to your professor and the committee. They are going to be committee, maybe five people, six people from different areas. So maybe you spend three years preparing this proposal, and believe me, sometimes they can throw your proposal away and say, this is not a PhD level proposal. You have to start again. And that's why we say that it sometimes can even go to seven years, eight years, depending on what, what you are going to present. But if they are, uh, agree with your, 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 your proposal, then uh, you're also required to do what we call oral exam. They are going to give you an exam. It can be one exam or two exams from the committee, and then you have to pass that exam. So most doctoral students also work as a teaching assistant, and sometimes they are research assistants. Um, at the end of the second and third year of a PhD, you complete a comprehensive exam, as I said, and then the thesis and the exam demonstrate your qualification, and then after that, then you can graduate with your, with your degree in, in, in PhD. So you can see that PhD is too demanding. But for you guys, I think the first step is to go to the master's, and then after that, you can think about going for PhD. Now, what challenge you expect? There's a lot of challenges on this. The first challenge is a uh, quantity of work which you are supposed to, uh, to present. As a graduate student, uh, you are the, the amount of work will be there, especially if you are a serious student. Even right now as a undergraduate student, if you are serious, actually you find that time is not there. Because most of us are working and then going to school or something like that. So most of the time, the uh, quantity of work should be too much for graduate, uh, graduate level studies. And also we expect you to have a good quality of what you are going to produce. If it's a paper, it should be a good quality. If it's a project, it should be a good quality. Even if it's, you, are, you are taking courseworks, you should expect you to get A and B. Actually, in some universities, as a, as a graduate student, you're not supposed to get C. If you get C, you lose the funding. That's the requirement. Even in my university, if you're a master's student, if you get C, you use the funding. So you see the, the way you expect, expression is very high. And then you need to be consistent. It means that your work should, somebody can follow your work and know what you are trying to do. Believe me as a professor, sometimes I get the project from the student. If I read it, I don't know what they are doing. It's not consistent. But as a graduate student, you are supposed to be consistent. It means that your work should, be, should show continuity of the excellence in that case. Time won't be enough for you if you are uh, a graduate student. You'll find that, oh, I need to do this, I need to write this, so the time management will be some challenging challenges which you're going to face. Uh, attending classes, studying, working part-time, participating in other activities, finding time for friends, family, and so forth is going to be a little bit challenging for you when you go for graduate school. That one you should expect. 
And then sometimes your thesis or dissertation can drag you down. And research suggests that students often postpone studies when they perceive the thesis or dissertation is overwhelming to them. So you do something, and as I said that, after six months, you present it, doesn't make sense, you have to start again, and some students even think of dropping some of their studies. So other challenge which you, uh, uh, you expect to experience is an uh, intellectual challenge. The bar at graduate school is higher than it has ever been before. So the mental requirement for you as a graduate student is also going to change. You need to think as a, as a, as a graduate student, not as an undergraduate student. So that is a challenge if you're not well prepared for that. And also we have emotional challenges. Uh, graduate school will take a long time sometimes. So once you achieve a candidate, especially for PhD, the research and writing, the report and thesis will consume you much. So those are some challenges which you should expect uh, in that case. And also another challenge is test of character. Graduate school tests not only your knowledge and skill for your subject, but also your determination. Are you determined to produce a good work as a graduate student? Also, another challenge you're going to come up with uh, uh, experience is commitment. Sometimes it might require you to study uh, and research during breaks, during Thanksgiving, during uh, spring break, during Christmas, because you need to achieve something. Maybe your professor wants something in, the, in one week, or you need to publish a paper, and then while other, other, other people are celebrating or partying, then you're in the lab or you're in uh, your cubicle writing report or uh, crushing the number and so forth. That can be a challenge sometimes, which you should expect. How about the research? The challenge from the research is uh, research in graduate school represents a focused personal research effort where you take the lead of your own. That is your own research. It's not that you are professor research, it's your own research. So you need to know what is missing on it. Do I need more data? Sometimes you have very, very small samples of data. You need to validate it. Say, okay, I just have maybe two or three. Uh, interviews, I need to do more. So it is uh, not your advisor who's going to all your hands and tell you what to do, but is on your side. You're the one who needs to dig and uh, find what you're supposed to do. So nobody finishes graduate school without being uh, tenacious, meaning that you are sticking with the same thing again and again, writing the report again and again, and maybe when you present it to your professor, I say, no, this is not good. So you become upset sometimes, but that is always Part of the part of the part of the experience, you'll encounter unexpected problem and obstacles that can add months or years of your graduate project. And some people might decide, no, I will take maybe one semester off and then come back next semester. But those are some challenges which you expect. You need to be flexible, meaning that uh, taking advantage of opportunities. Sometimes even you can change the project. You are working on one project for six months and it doesn't make sense to you, you can be flexible to change it and then do something else. Uh, you need to have interpersonal skills. Success in graduate school depends a great deal upon your ability to build and maintain interpersonal relationship with your advisor. And believe me, even myself, when I was doing my PhD, there are some times where we disagree with my, my advisor. And even he, uh, he threatened me that he's going to withdraw to be advisor. But he was just doing this to make sure that I am doing a good job. It's not in a personal way. So you might work on your, uh, on your research or your thesis, and then you disagree with the advisor or your committee, but that's just part of the process which you should expect. So let's finish with the advisor. Remember, when you are doing the master's or PhD, you are going to be led by advisor as well as a committee. And this committee are kind of your drivers who drive you to the final destination. You need to respect them. So these individuals give you direction and support for the appropriate development and learning goals for graduate students. That's your advisor and the committee. The advisor and the graduate committee also have the obligation of evaluating what you are doing, what's the uh, quality of your work. So you need to respect them in that case. The graduate student, the advisor, and the graduate committee constitute the basic core of what? Grad, uh, graduate education. It's not only you. You cannot just do that work and then grade yourself. The advisor and the committee is going to grade your work. 
It is the quality, scope, and extent of interaction in this group, you, advisor, and the committee that determine the significance of the graduate experience which you're going to get after end. So what are the expectations from the uh, advisor? You maintain a good relationship with uh, your advisor. If your advisor pay you for research as a TA or as a research assistant, don't talk about money. Talk about what you achieve. So though it's going, you're supposed to be paid, but don't put the payment as a, as a focus of your, what, what you're doing. Just put on what you're producing as the focus. Advisor might certainly have connection or inside and outside the university which can help you when you graduate to get some jobs. And the graduate students should behave in a professional way in all interaction with the, with the advisors for you to be successful in that case. And also ask your advisor before you register for elective classes, meaning that uh, don't just go and then find, oh, you know Dr. Chimba's classes are very, very easy. You always give A. And then you just take that class without knowing this class is contributing to what you are working on as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as your research. So your advisor should approve any course that you're going to take if you're going to go to graduate school. And most of the time is going to pick those courses which align with your project, which is going to add something into your project. So again, thank you for listening. And uh, if you have any question, let me know.